Hey everybody, this is Tamaya Robles. I am your credit repair expert. I am the host of my podcast, Coast to Coast Credit. I'm the owner of Fix My Credit Now 850.com. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So today I'm not necessarily talking about credit or credit repair. I am talking about business and business relationships. As you guys know, if you've been listening to me, I am trying to encourage everyone to slowly leave personal credit and go into business for themselves, for their family, what have you. Um, So every once in a while, I will talk about business and topics relating to business because it's really important, especially for people like me who never had uh, any education on, on being an entrepreneur, how to run a business, what to expect when running a business. These are a lot of things that, you know, there's a lot of situations that aren't talked about or discussed. You kind of fall into it as you're learning along the way, right? So one of the things is negativity and not just any sort of negativity, dealing with negative associates in business or business partners or business affiliates, referrals, just anything when it comes to business relationships that are negative. What do you do with that? Do you deal with that? Uh, That's something, honestly, I I still to this day battle with. And so I'm going to tell you recently about something that happened. So if you don't already know, I was part of an organization uh, I'm not going to say their name because, you know, I just don't feel like dealing with anybody's <laughs> drama when it comes to that place. But um, I was part of the organization. I can't tell you if I'm still part of it, if I'm not part of it. But, you know, on the outside, looking in to the unsuspecting eye, it's a very positive, pro-Black <laughs> nonprofit organization that has a lot of history. It's well known. Um, as far as I'm concerned, that's what's on the surface. Being involved in it, I see a lot of issues, major, major, major issues that I personally don't fuck with, not on a personal level or a professional level. That's just, it's just not my twist. I don't knock it for anybody else, but it's not my twist. However, they can reach such uh because of their age they they've reached nationwide you know they have um different divisions they have chapters throughout the united states so on and so forth they have um asian uh what is it asian native not native american asian hispanic uh, organization with a similar name so it's it's well known out in these streets but the way I see things, I just look at things a little differently, in my opinion. And the experience that I got from them from both the East Coast and the West Coast, ironically, were the same. I did meet some good people, and those people know who they are because I talk to them or I'll reach out to them for advice or whatever, hang out with them, whatever, support their cause, what have you. But for the most part, I I can't rock out with them because of how I've seen them treat each other, how I've seen them, how they have treated me and just what they, how they move currently. I'm I'm just not feeling it on paper. It seems like good intentions. Realistically, I can't tell, but me being the amazing credit repair expert that I am, (laughs) you know what I mean? Who's always willing to help the community help people, even if I don't really rock out with you, I'm able to see the bigger picture. I know I'm a beast at what I do. I know I'm excellent at what I do. And with this organization, there's individuals that do actually recognize that and know they need a credit expert or would like to have a credit expert for their clients. And so they can come to me. Mind you, I'm not the only credit repair expert out there in these streets. I get it. I get it. I get it. Everybody moves differently. I understand, but there's only one me. There's only one fix my credit now, com. And I do put myself out there like that. I do let it be known that, hey, I'm here if you need me. 
we don't have to like each other. We don't have to love each other, but I'm here if you need me. If you need me at an event, I got you. If you need me to do, um, I don't know, like a class for you, a PowerPoint presentation for your people, or if you just want me to educate your people, just, I got you. I got you. I got you. So I did do a PowerPoint presentation recently. I haven't done a PowerPoint in so long. And the reason why I don't do PowerPoints like that is because it gives a lot of people such as myself who are from corporate, that corporate-y, office-y feel. And I don't think that my message in my teachings resonates as well. So I don't do PowerPoint presentations. However, someone from the organization reached out to me and they were like, hey, last minute shit, right? Hey, can you show up and, you know, present? And I'm like, sure, you know, no problem. I'll whip up something real quick. And it's legit last minute. Like I had a day and a half before I was supposed to be on. I let them know I was going to be on. I'm still running a business, mind you. I'm still running my own business. And whatever happened, it was showtime last second, like 30 minutes before they were supposed to, I was supposed to go on and they were supposed to start. They canceled like, oh, we didn't hear from you or whatever. And I had already did this PowerPoint. So aside from this organization already <laughs> leaving a bad taste in my mouth, right? Uh, they reach out to me and then there's this. So I'm like, you know what? Bump this, whatever, whatever, right? Then recently, like a couple of days ago, uh, the president of one of the chapters or former president reached out to me and was like asking me to come up to their location which is an hour away tomorrow. Like literally it's tomorrow, right? So by the time you guys hear this, it should be done and over with. So I'll probably give you an update on how everything went. But let me tell you something. This particular chapter, I was part of this chapter, okay? I left the chapter. I'm not paying to be around people that don't like me. That's where I'm coming from. They don't like me. They have no legitimate reason for not liking me. I don't care that you don't like me. Like, that's the mad crazy thing. The reason why I agreed to be part of this whole organization in the first place is because I believe and pretty much am thoroughly convinced that my services can help the people, the community, the public. I know it can. I've been doing this for so long that I know what uh, impact it has on the public. So my dilemma is like, do I say, you know what, F you, um, you guys just got finished making me do a PowerPoint and you didn't show up. You've never shown up for me. You've never protected me. You've never defended me. And this is a black organization. I'm black. I've said it before. Uh, like when, when do you guys actually protect the black woman, not the black woman that agrees with everything that you say, but just in general, I don't see it. Not even in these specific types of organizations, right? So anywho, they reach out to me and they're like, um, we the president reach out, reaches out and is like, yeah, you know, um, I need you to, I would like you to come up here and, you know, we're having this opening and blah, but he he, and he, of all the people, he was the ringleader of doing me dirty, right? So you would think there would be like some sort of tail in between your legs type of situation. None of that. Like the dude tried to guilt trip me a little bit and all this other shit. So I'm, I'm, I'm ignoring it, but I'm like, you know what? I thought you already had a credit repair expert because they allegedly did, right? Oh, I thought you had a credit repair expert. Mind you, I know she wasn't really about that credit repair life because her and I talked before they all hated me and the beginning when I first landed on the west coast and she was like yeah um, I don't really fuck with credit repair like that I'm into other shit so I'm like all right cool now fast forward two years later she's magically the credit expert all right cool well I found out that she left the organization like I left the organization but I'm not saying anything this former president is like yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you, um, you know, you should come out and you should bring your kids. It's going to be great. It's going to be fun. Low key, 
this dude needs my services. Low key, this man can't fucking put his lips together to apologize for his behavior and everything he's done to the, the open, blatant disrespect. He can't publicly say, I'm sorry. None of that, right? So then he's like, can you come out here? And we're having this opening and blah, blah, blah. So I, before I answered him, because it disgusts me every time I see this man, I reached out to two friends of mine that I actually met. They're a married couple, and I met them through the same organization. I still rock out with them. They're cool people. So I also come to them like just anytime this organization gives me a problem child, I call them just to vent, just to laugh, and to get advice sometimes. So before I responded to this man with two middle fingers, you know, <laughs> like emojis, I called them and I said, hey, you know, what do you think? Like, they know how I was mistreated in this chapter. They know they witnessed it hand, um, hands on, all that. So the one individual, the one friend said to me, you know what? I would go whether they like me or not because there's opportunities here. This is an opportunity for you. This is an opportunity for you to get your business out there. This is an opportunity for you to help the community. This is an opportunity to actually grow your business and expand even more so, right? And isn't this what I came out for out here for in the first place was business was to help people on this code. I mean, I, I can literally be anywhere in the world and do my job, but like you know, specifically, I wanted to come to this state for this particular reason. But the thing is, it's like, that's true. So, but the problem is, what do you do when you walk into a room where you're hated? Like, you're literally hated. Just hate it, right? For no valid reason. Do you still go? Do you still take your business and go? That's the million dollar question. So mom girl, she, I felt like she made a good point. So therefore I did respond and I said, I'll be there. Not because of what he said, not because of the guilt trip. Actually, one of the most ignorant things that this man says, like he says stuff and he's so ignorant and so disrespectful and doesn't even realize it that he, how insulting he is. But anywho, he said to me, and I didn't even bring up the past he did, but one of the things he said was, you know, are you just going to dwell in the past or are you going to move forward? You know, I'm, I'm, I'm all about moving forward. And it's like, what? So, okay, okay. So what you're saying is I can beat your ass every single day. Every time I see you, it's on site. I'm on that ass, right? But then the sun comes up the next day and you're like, you know what? Let's not worry about the past. Let's focus on the future. Forget what I did yesterday. Let's move on. What do you do with that? So like on a personal level, you know, you would be like, F you. I don't need you. I don't need this. Fuck you. Fuck you. You're cool and fuck you. I'm out. If you don't know, that came from Half Baked, the movie. Go check it out. Matter of fact. When I'm done this episode, I'm probably going to watch it, yo. But anyway, like, what the hell? But, 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 this isn't personal. What is the million-dollar statement? Business is never personal, right? Business is never personal. And what my homegirl did say was true shit. Like, when you walk into a room, it doesn't matter if they like you or not. It's, it, you ha you're there to serve. You're there to serve the people. You have a business and you're trying to expand and grow and so on and so forth. Not everybody's going to like you. And I'm not trying to get everybody to like me. I already told y'all, if y'all follow me, you know, you already know. Like, I've always been the black sheep. I'm the black sheep of my family. I've always been someone like I wasn't the, part of the in crowd, but I wasn't part of the out crowd. I was a floater. So I was cool with everybody. But I'm, I'm me. I mean, so I'm not trying to be liked. So let me make that clear up. I'm not trying to be liked. But to be disliked 
in a professional setting, to be disliked is one thing, to be um, hated and disrespected is a different story. It's a different story. So this right here, I'm going to go. I'm going to go because I committed to going. I'm going to go because in reality, I don't think this event is going to be anything at all of what it's cracked up to be. For one, it's supposed to rain tomorrow, <laughs> right? Now, I'm the type of person, I'm not scared of rain, right? I'm not scared of rain. I'm from the East Coast. We got winter, spring, summer, and fall. I've seen a blizzard in the middle of the summer. I've seen hail. I've seen hurricanes, snowstorms, whatever. And guess what? We still driving that shit. <laughs> we still driving that shit, right? We, If it's about business, we're going to handle ours by any means necessary. I can't really say I've seen that on this side. However, I do see a lot of hustle and a lot of grinding, and that's why I love being on this side of the map. But I think what's going to happen, and I'm going to predict this, and you guys stay tuned. I will legit have a part two to this shit. Okay, so I'll give you guys an update. But I predict I'm going to go up here. It's going to be mad awkward. I was thinking about being on time, but I'm intentionally not going to be on time because I know the type of people that I'm dealing with and it's going to be very chaotic. It's going to be very unorganized, right? And then I'm going to step onto the scene with my curly wig. Y'all, if y'all see me on YouTube, you know my wig. I'm going to make an extra poofy, okay? And the afro is going to be popping, y'all. My face is going to be beat to the gods. I'm not going to wear anything professional other than a hoodie that is uh, that has my business on there and some tights and some Air Force Ones because, you know, I got to represent. I'm, I'm, this is me. Welcome to me. Welcome to FixMyCreditNow850.com where I talk to the people, I fuck with the people, and this is how the people relate, okay? This is how I get my clients, all right? So, but I know I'm going to get the side eye. I know I'm going to get, oh, she's she's here. <laughs> she's here. <laughs> but I, I promise you, you guys, the level of disrespect that I got from these people it's amazing that I'm even fucking coming. It's amazing. But I really do want to help the people. Before the negativity became so severe, I did have every intention on going up to this particular city. Like I said, it's uh, it's about, what is it, about an hour away from me, an hour north from me. It's a nice, cool drive. I can listen to you know, another person's podcast, a murder mystery or something while I take that nice ride. I'm cool with that. But the question is, is all money good money? Is all business good business? Because is it worth it? Is it financially worth it to deal with negative people on a professional level? If you stick to the code that business is never personal, do you still go if they hate you? So one of the things I asked my homegirl was this, like, all right, boom, would you go into someone's house where the whole house hated you? Because the reason why I said house, because that's personal, that's intimate, that's that's person's comfort zone. And while you're walking into their comfort zone, every single individual hates you. Do you still go? Now, she said, yeah, she said, I'm going to still go. I may not come back again, but I'm going to still go because there's an opportunity for me. OK, again, I'm going to go, but I'm going to say this. This is my opinion. I'm still learning. Yes, I've been running my own business for, for over five years now with six, seven years. I lost track. But usually what I do on a personal level I'm a cutter. If I don't fuck with you or I don't like you or you're giving me bad vibes or you're making my people uncomfortable, you're whatever the case, anything negative on a business level, I try to, I try to handle it as professionally as I can. Okay. I've been, in my opinion, I think I've done pretty decent 
there's always room for improvement. But then I do go Philly on people if you don't, if, if, if it keeps going, like the negativity and the disrespect to anybody, me included, gets worse. Then I wild out. I can still do business with you, but then I wild out, right? And it's either going to go one or two ways. Either you stick around or you bounce or I leave or I stick around, whatever the case. Are we going to do business or not? Now, I told y'all stories where I there were very few times where I had to curse a client out, but that t- particular client, I don't know. I think that's literally how she just communicates with everybody. I heard how she spoke to her family and her children. It was wow. She literally, that's how she talks to everybody. And it was unacceptable, but she brought business. So that's different. But after a while, it the money is just not worth it. The, the relationship to me is just not worth it. Now, another thing about this organization is they're good for getting money from you. They're good for taking pictures. Oh, let's take pictures. This is amazing. But but they're not good at producing, especially not the chat, not the organization as a whole, because they've mastered that as a whole. But as individual chapters, and mind you, I've been to two chapters one on the East Coast and one on the West. They run pretty much the same. They talk the same shit. They got the same problem, right? In my opinion. So you have to pay to be part of the chapter, to be part of the organization. Not a problem. But are you producing results? Like, is the networking game so amazing that you see your money coming back? I didn't. I was there for a couple of years. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't get any clients there. I didn't get any referral partners. I got a lot of pictures though. I got a lot of, Hey, let's go to this next convention. We got a winter meeting, a spring meeting, a fall win. We got an annual meeting. We got a 75th meeting. Like, yo, all of that. Where's the dough, man? Where's the cash at? Who am I helping? Where's the community service at, man? Where? Where is it? I don't see it. I don't see it. So I foresee that this is going to be my final nail in the coffin. I'm going to give y'all a part two. I'm going to give y'all a part two. But let, just just, just remember this. What is this title again? Is all money, even good money, having negative business relationships? And then there's going to be a part two. And you're going to remember this, that I called it out, that they took pictures, they were looking at me side eye, and please believe I will never go back. It's just not worth it professionally. So I think the question of whether or not all money is good money it depends on the circumstances, right? It depends on the circumstances, right? Like some money, it's dirty money. It might be illegal or whatever. Of course, of course, that's not good money. That's not good money. But what if you are in a situation where you're the money is legal, but the energy is bad and negative and do you still take that money? Do you still take that money? Is is it still money? <laughs> right? I don't know. Something to think about. Like I said, my mind is pretty much made up. I don't get out much anyway. So it's like, let, let me see. I'll be very, very, very surprised if I go here tomorrow and it's actually something productive. I'll be surprised. I'll be surprised. But I know I'm going to come prepared because I still have to be professional. Regardless of how people perceive me, they still need me. And one thing I love about people that can't stand me and have no real reason why is that you're going to need me before I fucking ever need you. And they proved that today. Within 48 hours, they, they, they called on me twice. I don't call on these people. They don't do anything for me. They're too negative. They're not productive and they don't do shit for the community, but take pictures <laughs> and take pictures and flash their titles around like that means anything. But anyway, I'm going to wrap this up, yo. 
be sure, let me, I'm trying to remember to say this. Be sure to like, comment, share, subscribe. Definitely leave a comment, you know, especially if you're on my YouTube channel or whatnot. Definitely comment. What are your thoughts? What do you think I should do? How would you handle the situation? Like, where, uh, let me know. Let me know. But um, yeah, I'm definitely going to wrap it up. I will give you guys a part two if you're interested. Um, even if you're not interested, you know, just check it out anyway. <laughs> but yeah, I'm going to let you guys go. But I do wish you guys the best of luck on your credit journey. Talk to you soon.